We're back in our draft lottery preview talk in Wolves. They've had a different, a different opening night starting point guard for each of the last seven years. Back in 2004, it was Cassell. 2005, Marco Yarich. 2006, Mike James. <laughs> he was supposed to be the savior. Remember that? 2007, it was Sebastian Telfair. 2008, yes, it was Randy Foy here in the starting job. That didn't last long. 2009, Johnny Flynn spent his entire rookie year in the starting lineup for the Wolves. And last year, Luke Ridenauer, your starting point guard for the Wolves on opening night and for most of the season. And Ricky Rubio likely to be the opening night starter for the Wolves this upcoming season. Is he season. coming for real, Rick? After being drafted in 2009, sure? fifth overall, he will be a Timberwolf this year. It is official. You see his numbers from last year in the EuroLeague. He helped Barcelona win the ACB Spanish League Championship, and now he's coming over the Wolves, and they hope for more wins with Rubio. Rick Hamlet, Steve Smith, Greg Anthony. Smitty, I start with you. Give me Rubio's impact with the Wolves this year. Is he the starter all year? Can he be a 30-plus minute guy? And eventually, five, seven, eight years, is he going to be a star or is he just going to be an average player? Where do you see this all going? You know, I've been watching Rubio, on, obviously, on film, getting a chance to see him play international. You know, I, I see the potential as far as a passer, but coming over here, doing the other things as a point guard, starting, defending, being able to shoot the basketball, he's really struggled on. Obviously, he's been winning. And is he quick enough? I, I don't see him being quick enough. I think you still have to go with Luke Rittenauer, and also you got to go with Johnny Flynn until Rubio can come in and be proven. You've got Rubio third string behind those guys? you got to come in and prove for me. I mean, I'm just probing here. Position. That, you okay. got to come take those guys' position okay. because I think you lose a team if you just hand over the team for mm -hmm. a guy to Rubio and he doesn't pan out. I think you lose the entire organization, you lose fans, you lose teammates going, hey, you got to have, if he can come over here and, and dominate in training camp, hand him the basketball. But until then, I have Luke Redenauer, Johnny Flynn, then Rubio. Well, the way they've been drafting, they may still take another point guard in the first round. <laughs> we don't know. I mean, this is a team that has had a history of drafting 2009, they took, what, positions. four point guards? Yeah, and, and the one who was the best, probably Ty Lawson, they ended up trading, yeah. who's turned out to be a pretty special player for the Denver Nuggets. So, uh, listen, we're talking about even if they go potentially with, with a guy like Derek Williams, they just drafted Wesley Johnson, who's a small forward as well, not to mention just Michael having Michael Beasley there. So they've got a lot of guys playing the same position, uh, which doesn't necessarily bode well for building a team moving forward. And we take a look at team needs for the Timberwolves. They will take second and 20th in the first round of this draft. They need a center to complement Kevin Love. Darko Milicic was the starting C for them last year. They could obviously upgrade there, and they could use another solid wing player. Uh, they already have a bunch, as GA mentioned. Beasley, Randolph, Wesley Johnson, Webster, uh, a lot of guys. And you see uh, history here with the second overall pick. Last year, Evan Turner. The year before that, Hashim Thabit. Michael Beasley, second overall pick to Miami back in 2008. That was traded to Minnesota prior to last year. Kevin Durant back in 07, and LaMarcus Aldridge tabbed second overall by the Bulls in 2006. So uh, according to, you know, David Aldridge's mock draft on NBA.com and most mock drafts you see out there, this man, Derek Williams, will be the Timberwolves pick at number two. Smitty, do you see it that way? You know, I like him at Minnesota because you look at their lineup, obviously point guard. They can't go point guard again. If they do, I'm going to be upset with the Wolves. When you talk about two guards, I think you move Wesley Johnson to that two spot. Me too, then, I agree. And I think you move him down. I think he's best slated that. I've been watching him since he was young, a Detroit kid. Uh, Beasley and Derek Williams. Obviously, if you draft Derek Williams, you have to move Beasley. I agree. And I think and look look Beasley's at Beasley's numbers, by the way, in his last season in college, 26 and 12, compared to Derek Williams last year, 19 and 8. Uh, he's a scorer. We all know that. But I think Kevin Love is a guy that can score the basketball more solid. I think you move Beasley, you bring in Derek Williams, and the one thing you have in Derek Williams is he's going to play hard. What position may he might be, I'm not sure. But he's going to play hard, playing next to Kevin Love. And if Rubio and some of these point guards turn out, he won't have that pressure on him to come in and try to be a big-time scorer. And, hey Greg, I want to talk about Derek Williams in terms of his NBA position. Mm -hmm. He wants to play the three. A lot of people think he'd be better suited at the four. What do you think? I, I think he's going to have to play the three. Uh, the, the thing about the four and the way I, I like to evaluate players is my first question is can he defend his position? So you're going to ask him as a four at 6'8", to have to go down and defend guys like Chris Bosh and 
Kevin Garnett. I don't foresee that being the case. I think his game, while he's not a pure small forward swing player yet, I think he can develop into that. Uh, the one thing I love about his game is the, the fact that he's shown so much growth year over year. Remember, he was not the top recruit for Arizona for Sean Miller. He was the sixth guy of that great recruiting class. But his work ethic has allowed him to become the type of player that he is. And I think that mindset will carry him moving forward. So I, I like him for Minnesota if they're able to get him because I think he's also a nice compliment to Kevin Love. They have similar games in that they are energy guys and they're not about me. They're about we. I think they, they, they give you a winning culture in terms of that front line.